It's for the champagne package for the Jetta. I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, know, well, you can get a fridge. Yeah, back the fridge too, comes right? in. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is how most people drive their Jetta. <laughs> hey, everybody! It's Chris and Charlie here with Daily Motor, and we're waiting to go outside because it's cold. But I suppose there's nothing else to wait for now, so let's get <laughs> to it. Fortunately, we have a manual transmission. That, and that, that shifting action should warm us up. You know, it's it a lot should, of physical. Yeah. yeah. Get uh, the joints moving. Right. Now, next to the very. God, that thing looks massive next to the Jetta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, look at the, the black grills going on in both of them. We have yeah. the 2023 Volkswagen Jetta Sport. The Sport trim is essentially a base trim with some exterior glitz and glam and a little bit on the inside as well, but essentially base. And we're actually mm. kind of excited because it's a manual, as we and it already says stated. Sport. Yes, right and it says sport. This makes me think of the old Ram 1500s that said sport on the back uh, in big letters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually have already driven this for a week. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't little, a typical review. Yeah, a bit of a different uh, schedule going on this week. I spent probably three days in this, and you spent about two days in it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Have oh, good amount of good idea of uh, what we think about it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you can see here, the Jetta has been out for a long, long time, and it is still very much and car you get a very quickly trunk opening shook the whole car trunk that's actually a pretty darn good size when you consider that this is a compact sedan you have a place where a spare would go or could go if you could wanted to go. add one. Oh, can you do that i'm sure you could there's a little screw right there yeah, yeah yeah why not that would be a question for the tofer because he's an enthusiast of adding spares to cars that don't have spares mm. he's done that to both of his vehicles really where yes. does he put it in the civic just in the spare tire well oh well, that's yeah. a good place for it mm -hmm. The seats do fold, but as you'll see here, they don't exactly fold uh, to make a huge opening. They just kind of give you a little bit of a, a little bit of a hole that you could stick some longer things through. Hmm. Yeah, cloth seats, which is appropriate because this car costs about twenty four thousand dollars, twenty three to twenty four roughly. I like the white piping. I do too. I bet you get that with the sport. Oh. I'm sure you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, even get a flip down armrest. Yeah, with cup holders. Yeah, and what do you put grippy this cup one? holders. Uh, a LaCroix? No, no, not LaCroix. The, um, it's even too small for a San Pellegrino, isn't it? Yeah, you'd maybe want to go. Do the Germans have like a smaller sort of drink? A beverage, like a glass. I'm picturing like a tall glass. Like a champagne flute? It's for the champagne package for the Jetta. I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, well, you can get a fridge yeah, back here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see, Chris is about 5 foot 11. He likes to point out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the seat in front of the They measured from... me at the doctor last time. I am five foot eleven. Okay. Was that before or after your hair was cut? Because that probably added about an inch or so. It was on before top. my hair was cut. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah. Now, now he's five foot ten. Yeah. But you can see he still fits pretty well. Are you yeah, comfortable? Yeah. I got plenty of room back here. Yeah. No complaints. Yeah. You can Except this for to something like well, the Mazda three, and there's a lot more room here. This is a little crispy, but here okay. or here, both both spots. At least it's not hard plastic. Yes, but there's uh, some squish. Mm -hmm. Also for the back seat, that doesn't matter. Oh, and the door panels don't match. I just realized that. Well, don't However, tell Volkswagen that. They'll get furious at you. It's less offensive in this car for a couple of reasons, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. First reason is this has black interior, so you don't notice it as much. Sure. Second reason is this is only twenty four grand, and I don't blame them for not having white stitching on these rear door panels. Chris's solution to all this is to just never own a four-door car because you're never going to have kids or friends, so you just only... Mm -hmm. you just, all of your friends Most have their own cars. Most of my cars are two-door. Yeah. The majority of them are two doors. Right. You'd rather your friends drive themselves separately so that you can drive I can take alongside them. One yes. friend is fine. Yeah. Emily. More than that, though, mm -hmm. too stressy. Yes. Uh, back here, you'll see two of the four speakers that this car is equipped with. <laughs> Not many. That's right. Did you do a sound system test on I'm it? going to after this. Oh my as long as they don't <laughs> scoop it from us. Honestly, a really, really solid door thunk. Can you feel opening and closing the doors? It's yeah, quite impressive. German cars have a nice feel. I mean, you open the door on this, and then you open the door on a Kia Forte. It's a it's pretty, pretty big difference. difference. Yeah, this feels twice the weight. Uh, did you notice black mirror caps and a black shark fin? I bet you those are interchangeable between all the different color models. I didn't notice that, but it makes sense. I didn't do too much staring at this car because it's just a car. It's yeah. like you, know, you don't really look at it and think anything of it. Yeah. So Chris is going to need. <clears throat> this. Ahem. Did I tell you what happened when I drove? I think I did, but the, the, the car with the key with Ken Panton. The Chevy Trax that we drove had, oh, a, had key. a key. He like 
He didn't know how to work it. <laughs> he was like, what is this? <laughs> oh, dear. That's funny. Sometimes keys are fun. Yeah. I like well, keys. Mm -hmm. uh, do you notice how awful the sound this makes when you open the door and the car is running? <laughs> yes. I think... Why was she staring at me like that? I think I did a pretty good impression of that. I think you did too. Uh, what was I going to say? I don't know. So we also had this 7 Series this week. Mm. This massive thing Direct right competitor. Here. Yes. I was just going to say. I did not mind. I had both of these cars in my possession earlier this week. And I shot the night drives back to back. And I shot that one first. And I thought mm. getting into this, I would just feel like getting into a, a trash bin. But actually, I really enjoyed it because of the six-speed manual. The six-speed manual helps a bunch, and German cars, even the budget ones, feel nicer this does than feel... a lot of other, but Japanese, Korean, yeah. American. This feels a lot nicer than $24,000, right. in my opinion. And that's not to say it is nicer, it just has the general <laughs> feel. The way everything fits together, and, and the, the way things work. I mean, you turn the volume knobs and the climate controls, it's, yeah. it's even the font, it's very mature. Yeah, I, so, I, oh, this passes your font test. Oh, absolutely. Okay, that's yes. good. I will point out, I think the gauge cluster is unnecessary. As it is you see a little here, bit it's unnecessary. It's a huge screen. It's a nice cluster. That screen is bigger than this screen. It is. This That could be this, and yeah. this could be that, and the world would be a better place. I, just give me two gauges. You know, Charlie, this is nicer than the cluster you get on the Lexus RZ 450E. <laughs> <laughs> It just seems silly to, to spend that. Maybe, it, yeah, I don't know, yeah. maybe it's actually cheaper to have that than it is it could to have be, two real to have physical gauges. gauges. Yeah. But, but you I, do get a lot up here. You get the digital gauge cluster mm -hmm. with the $1,000 driver assist pack or whatever it's called. Okay. You get a leather wrapped steering wheel. It's a nice wheel. Nice. It's yeah. a very nice steering wheel. Well, and I wonder what you get if you don't get that steering wheel. In there. I don't even want to know. Okay. Uh, and then you also get all of these different Such driver nice aids. You get uh, and physical buttons. Yeah, they That's work so very nice. Well. You get adaptive cruise. Uh, we can see your distance set right here. You also get lane keep assist, which doesn't work very well. No. Um, I might get roasted for this. I do. I don't. Never figured out how to turn traction control off. I don't I, yeah, I don't think. I don't think you can. you can. I might get roasted for this. However, I enjoyed the daily driving aspects of this car more than the GTI. Because of the stupid wheel. Well, it's, this is easier. And the infotainment. The GTI. Yeah. yeah. This you simply plug in a device, you get to CarPlay, <laughs> and you change your things on the wheel. That's it. That's, <laughs> That's it. It's it. Just the one. end. Yeah. And <laughs> honestly, and we'll see a little bit more when I'm behind the wheel. But this motor is kind of torquey and fun. It is. Like, I like it's it a not bit. bad. Yeah, and it isn't. It isn't like horribly grainy. It's no, a little grainy, not at all. I'll give her the. Get a little wheel spin action there. Yeah. Not only that, but let's get this out of the way right now. Chris achieved a daily motor record 50 miles per gallon yes. on the highway fuel economy test with this car. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's remarkable. And that's not just from the, ga the gauge cluster or whatever. That's mirrored at the pump. Yep. Verified number. And we've heard from other colleagues that this car is capable of those sort of numbers. Ah, this is good. Totally not stopping at the red, even though this car has the green light arrow. Yeah. Did the big uh, American big flag thing honk? Yes. Well, they, they had been sitting there for like 10 seconds. Probably. I see. I got this car from you on what was that Thursday? The yes. Friday, Thursday or Friday? Thursday. Uh, and you had just filled it up for the fuel economy test. Yeah. Ah, uh, you still haven't. on full. Yeah. Yeah. See, I had to go out and drive this car before the fuel economy test because I had put like however many miles on it, and the and it hadn't even not moved. only had this not moved, the distance to empty didn't change from my entire drive back from Metro Detroit to right. to Ipsy. Yeah. I've driven this, I drove this to Westland back, so that was probably 50 miles or so round trip. I drove it, I did the daily, uh, the winding road drive, so you know I was hooning it there. Flogging it, yeah. Yeah, and drive, drove it to my house, drove it around. It's it's like it, it's like it doesn't use fuel. Which lane? Pretty good passing power there, third gear, decent load on torque, as you said. Yeah, it is very gutless below like uh, 1500, so that's tough. But I think once it's it, the, yeah. Once it comes online around two grand, it pulls pretty. That's strong. like where the boost comes in. You can feel when oh, the, yeah. you can feel when the turbo. It's fun. Goes. It's fun. Uh, very easy to drive. So easy. Very easy. I mean, you could put anyone in this car that has no idea how to drive a manual, and I think they could get the hang of it pretty quick. Easy to rev match. Dude, I mean, so there's nothing easy. to it. Yeah. 
And pretty quiet. Were you decently comfortable in your highway fuel economy? Yeah. Test? Yeah. Yeah, I just listened to a podcast because the uh, sound system it's is horrendous. gothic. Yes. Yeah. I firmly believe that Volkswagens these days are just made for traveling businessmen who yeah. put 30,000 miles on their cars and just need something that sips fuel and is comfortable. Because for the price, these aren't necessarily... Oh, yeah. This is good. Ah, and the Jeep up there that went straight across from two lanes. That's that's good. <laughs> yep. I was going to say, uh, today on the test route, on mm -hmm. the way here, there was a exploded bag of trash at the intersection of the there, which may have gotten run over and cleared. But there was also an Explorer Sport Track with one of its wheels off. Oh, <laughs> maybe it had gotten a wheel stolen. So, no, it was, it, was on, it was on the road. It just came off. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is a nice place to be for this price point. It oh really is. yeah, this is. I mean, okay, so let's talk competitors. Kia Forte. Yep. Also like that uh, car. Honda Civic. That's going to be the toughest one to over. Right. To overcome. Toyota Corolla. It's a fire truck. Um. What else? Nobody. Oh, the Nissan Sentra. Yep. Or, yeah, Sentra. The Sentra. That's the thing is, surprisingly, all of those are pretty good There are options. a lot of nice... The Elantra, did you say the Elantra? No, I didn't say the Elantra. Elantra. And Mazda nice. 3. Mazda 3. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's I mean... A, it's a packed class, and they're all... They're all pretty, pretty decent. decent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. they're all priced pretty well. So many people run away into these $38,000 compact crossovers and everything. When, when this when, could do a lot of people very well. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of space. It's much more efficient. miles per hour. That was like 34. The ride is good. There's not yeah. really creaks or rattles. The wheels are small enough. You've got enough sidewall on it. This is one of the most mature options in this class. It I, is quite mature. If yeah. you're someone who's an adult and doesn't want to be taken as someone who just only purchased their first car or something like that, you might go with something like this. Yeah. I could... I, there, I, if I did a lot of highway miles, I think I'd pick this over the Civic. This is quieter than the Civic. And it's more fuel efficient than the Civic. Yeah. If I were doing a lot of city driving, I think I'd pick the Civic. You can get the Bose in the Civic too. Yeah. Although, can you get a premium? You can probably get Fender in this, but Fender's not very good. Correct. Uh, did you get irritated with all of the eco tips on the cluster? I did. I didn't. I don't know if I'd go as far as to say irritated. I did find it silly that this morning I started the car up and I was plugging my phone into CarPlay, and within that 20 seconds of me sitting there, it was stop, telling me that stop letting the car idle. Yeah. Yeah. However, I do know in Germany, people get very cross about letting your car idle. So. They do. Yeah, it also gets mad when you drive with the windows open. Really? It says it uh, increases drag. Would it get mad at you for driving with the air con on? I think it did yell at me for climate controls once, yeah. I could get that if you had eco mode on and then uh, you want the tips, but yeah, that's a bit much yeah. to tell you. The also, automatic. gear shift indica indicator I understand because it's yeah. just telling you to change gear. Uh, but it says, it gives you the little change indicator down here and then at the top it says... Eco tip: Note to gear shift indicator. Oh, mm -hmm. wow! I guess I ignored most of those. Yeah, I'm very observant with things like that. So. This is a nice little touch here. I mean, for a base car, it's got a lot of nice this touches. This car is nice. This is even. I like squishy. this as well, and the mm -hmm. shift knob feels nice. You've got a nice leather shift boot here that's stitched. Do all these blank switches bother you? Not really. Okay. Now you've got one button, eco. I like how easy the climate control is to use. Yeah. Because I literally, I got in here this morning and I was like, oh, I, and it was here, and I simply went, bloop. And then I turned this to one, and I was done. You know how long that would have taken me to do in, in a GTI. most of the other cars that we've had in the yeah, last month? Yeah, all the 7 Series. Even. 7 yeah. Series, GTI. I mean, just even if it were a Hyundai Kia product, I'd probably have to press a button just to illuminate my climate controls. I mean, it yeah. works. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a very, a very easy car to use. Yeah. yeah. Also, if you want to go out and get a car that you could probably pick up for MSRP or less, this is probably one of them. It's true. It's not going to be crazy marked mm -hmm. up or anything. Yeah, because it's pretty old. Yeah. I don't find it particularly handsome. It's not offensive, but it's just... It just is. Mm -hmm. well, that's, what I, that's why I said I didn't do much looking at it, because it's just a car, and it's silver. Sure. If it weren't silver, maybe it would be... Yeah, if I got one, I would get one and... But one silver red. makes it more civilized and easier to fly under the radar. I guess. You know what Emily's neighbor told me the other day? She told me that red cars are the most stolen. I feel like that's backwards. I think that's just... I think she... I have heard the whole urban myth of red cars get ticketed more often. And that's what I thought, because she came Probably over to look at Emily's car, and she goes, oh, you got a red car. You know, those are the most stolen. I think maybe she meant those are the most ticketed, hmm. but it just didn't come out right. I don't know. Yeah. I just, so sometimes you just have to yeah, nod just, and... Mm -hmm. NPC interactions. Mm -hmm. 
right. I do have a, a bit of a strange driving complaint with this car. Okay. And uh, it might not be particularly legal, but I think a lot of people can empathize with it. Uh, you're rolling up to, you're coming up to a stop sign or whatever, you're driving in third, or you're in second, come down. I like to be able to sort of kind of roll out here about eight miles per hour and leave it in second and then that roll is, back on it. But there's working. no, I'm full throttle right now. <laughs> there it goes. There dude. it picks up and goes. <laughs> but most manual cars, you don't ever have to go into first unless you're at a dead stop. Yeah. You you use second if you're at a rolling stop. Yeah. But this car Jamming really in struggles in second below 10 miles per hour. But yeah, it's so easy to shift. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like being in this cockpit. It, it doesn't feel like a $23,000 car. It doesn't. Or maybe we just are used to cars being more expensive and we have no concept of what $23,000 should be. That is possible. Yeah. That is possible because also consider that everything we drive is always top trim. Yeah, I actually respect Volkswagen nice. giving us, for giving us this one with Bay Trip. Yeah. So, yes, we've joked and complained about the sound system and everything, but... <laughs> I mean, we're talking about... Volkswagen had the nuts to actually give us a car that's mostly base. Yeah. Well, they probably wanted to show off how decent a $24,000 offering is right. from them. So. You like that heel toe right there? I did like that. Do you wish it had a handbrake? Yeah. Yeah. There were a few times this week where I was like... Mm. Yeah. Handbrake and a way to disable stability control. Do you like that 60 is achievable in second gear? Yeah, the gears are pretty long. Yeah. It's like a Porsche. Probably helps with the fuel economy. Oh, definitely. You gotta yeah. beat this track's no oversteer. Oh, God. <laughs> a lot of stability control intervention there. At least it's not complaining about being driven hard. No? It's not giving me eco tips? Yes. We did lose five miles of range, though, from that. <laughs> oh, no. Still on full for fuel economy, though. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is, I bet you this car is pretty darn reliable. I know everyone always goes to the German or to the Japanese brands for reliability, but think of how long they've been building this powertrain and how simple all the engineering is in here. Yeah. The only thing is, I'm not sure if it's a direct injection motor, and if it is, the manual's gonna help keep that carbon cleared out, but if you had an automatic Jetta, you might build up some carbon in the, in the valves there. Yeah. Well, just get a manual. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the tip here, is get a manual. Hmm. I think he probably has to do yeah, that. Yeah, Well, while we're waiting for him, let's do a quick uh, zero to 60 here. Okay. Did I do that right? Should I have slipped the clutch a little bit more? Yeah, I don't know why that was so violent. <clears throat> it's because we had wheel hop. I think the problem is it won't let you turn anything off. Yeah. So. There's a 60. Damn it. If I had a handbrake, I could flip it around. It doesn't exactly love having its having its hair pulled. No. But I don't think Jetta drivers are doing that. This I think is that's, for the this is civic for this is for activity. the uh, Christian motorist. Yeah. Oh, there's an enclosed trailer you could try and buy back there. I'd take the whole thing with the oh, truck. Oh yeah, and the all. truck too. Yeah. It's just hijacking. I like that the engine doesn't mind being up at its higher revs. It doesn't sound like you're straining. Yeah. Goodness. Oh, there's the there's the exploded trash. Oh, God. <laughs> this is how most people drive their Jetta. <laughs> oh no, we've lost a bar of fuel. Ah, uh, worthless. <clears throat> I quite like this car. I do too. I like it. Yeah. I didn't really have any complaints other than the dreadful sound system you put it well in that the other car that we have this week is worth five times this car yes and i was not that disappointed to give it back to you because i knew i got to drive this yeah, yeah. i think that's no, i was fine driving this yeah 
I would get an SE model because that gives you proxy key and it only costs like 500 more than this. <laughs> you know me, I would never get the Sport because I'm never going to pay more for appearance. Yeah. Um, the only way I did, the only place I've done that in my wife, my life is Alyssa. Mm. She um, was cost more because she's pretty. Yes. Gotcha. Do, uh, pretty women cost more. Does the SE come with a manual? I believe you can get a manual on all the trims, yeah. Oh, in all trims. Okay. Yeah, and or you could just get the GLI, which is which is a good car. You could, but does the GLI? The GLI still has all the classic buttons and everything, doesn't I believe it? So yeah, because yeah. it's the GLI is always a generation behind the GTI. So the next gen GLI will be, will be worse. dreadful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is the one to get. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sure, Volkswagen appreciates that. You know what, Volkswagen? You gotta just we're doing you a solid here. Yeah. You know and everyone agrees with us. Yeah. Can I point something out? Yeah. <clears throat> This trunk release button is done properly because in the BMW we have right now, direct competitor to this car. That's right. You can push the trunk button both ways. Yeah. And I never know what is open because you push it down to open or do you pull it up to open? You, uh, you pull it up to open it. All right. That makes sense to me because you're like goes opening up. it. Yeah. Right? But this is, you can't push it down. So it's, oh, it's okay. only one it's way. It's only open. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much for watching. We think the Jetta is quite good, especially if you want to blend in and get excellent fuel economy and sort of enjoy driving, but also never have to think about driving at the same time. Does that, does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. fair. Yep. Uh, I think this is a Paris and Nicole car, but a very young Paris and Nicole, like uh, like 16 year old girl just got her first new car and it's a new Jetta. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so thank you all so much for watching. We are Paris and Nicole with Daily Motor and as always, six speed manual on. 50 mpg on. 50 that's better 50 mpg on. damn it <laughs> mm -hmm.